Pleasant good evening. We have with us PDP political leader Watson Duke. Pleasant good evening to you, sir, comrade. Good evening to the observer. <laughs> good evening. How's man? Yeah, Great well, to be well, the observer. You know how things are. I want to thank you so much for taking time out to link with us. We have so many folks uh, trying to uh, get on the program this evening. So, again, thank you so much. Uh, let's get down to business. Now, how, if any, has yesterday's party launch consultation? Because they've made it quite clear it wasn't an official party launch, but a party launch consultation by the Chief Secretary, Fali Augustine, and his team in Tobago may have affected your political agenda moving forward. No. What happened yesterday was a further manifestation of the Fali Chavez Augustine. To put it frank, he's unreliable. He's not a man whose word trusted. Yesterday was supposed to be a party launch. A party launch means you would have had a party and you are now about to launch. That's what it simply means. Based on the fire that was proper media, persons were supposed to pay some three twenty five for juices and refreshments. I'm not certain how much three twenty five he did collect. He has not reported to the public how much money he did collect. But I must say, it was rather fraudulent. Are you aware that the US did charge Marcus Garvey under such circumstances for promulgating that he was having this ship, this big new ship, to carry people from one place to the next. But the ship, the picture used as a ship was only a picture and not one of the Black Star Line ship. And for that, they charge him. What you peddle you must sell. You can't peddle one thing and sell something else different. Fali should apologize to the country for being dishonest in what he peddled. There was a document that simply showed his face, and the predominant color was orange or blue. And it was clear, party launch. If you have been a party long, you want a big place. You want to be a gala event. Hence, one understood the venue as your park complex. You no. can't tell me you just went to have food. Well, a consultable, but here's where it gets a bit, uh, a, a bit right. muddy, Mr. Mr. Duke. You are the observer. You talk to me. Yeah, Mr. Farley said that the, the, the building of the new party is one taken from a bottom-up approach and not one where leaders sit in a dark room and make decisions. So when the PDP was campaigning, what, what exactly was the narrative? If we're talking about bottom-up now, exactly what difference will this be? Because the PDP was out there, it, it, was, it was different, it took the bottom-up approach, then who changed it? Who manipulated it? And who distorted that entire mantra and the agenda? You are very right. His word does not match his actions. Farley is downright being deceitful. He's being dishonest in his approach to the public. You can't say one thing but do another thing. If you are talking bottom-up approach, then there should be no demarcation of do... Let me use a better word. There should be no bar for those who can't contribute and who can, can contribute. Firstly, keep it in monetary value, which took me back to the first incarnation of the Tobago House of Assembly, where it was the planter question that ruled the white man who owned plantation and had a particular amount of money and a particular amount which they could have voted. They made decisions. You are saying the only persons who can make decisions at that campaign launch was those who pay based on what was out again in the advertisement. If you are saying bottom-up approach, you want everyone. You want those who can't pay but have good ideas. That's a bottom-up approach. And the PDP is the only bottom-up party. I mean, I don't copy me, but he has funny eyes. 
he has an act that does not sleep properly. And so therefore, because of his visual imbalance, my independence was me running against the people an independent at 2015 election. Okay? And after the PM won, I then asked people to come and let's form a party. And they came at an open place where I had a tent, and there's one journal, and it's still alive today, Liz Williams. She was at the campaign at my party formation. We call it a party formation and not a party launch. And here we had persons speaking freely. We took all the names of everyone and we voted. And when we came up with the name, that was it. One evening we took and we did that. He started just today, 5 p.m. and finished after midnight. And he's telling people, you have five names and you're going to come back and choose a name and a color. But Crystal Moore will be responsible for writing up the Constitution. Crystal Moore is not a virgin politician. She has rumbled in politics and is dirty with all types of leaning on her clothing. She has the top leaning, she has the forward leaning, and God knows what other leaning she has on her. And you are saying someone who is not pure. You are taking the constitution for the open-minded, for the unbiased, for those without prejudice. Come on. Think again. Now, here's, 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 where it also, here's where it also gets interesting with you. Uh, Farley said that there was no fight with you over the PDP, pointing out that they left you alone and allowed you to have what was yours. He said that the people of Tobago will build out what is theirs and have an ownership. What do you say to those folks who say, all right, they've left you alone, uh, go ahead now, and you left them no choice but to do what they had to do yesterday to start that consultation? That was always in the mind of Farley Augustine. Farley Augustine, again, is a copycat, but he's a mediocre, I will say, copycat person. He sees, monkey see, monkey want to do. Monkey see me have an independent, run as an independent. Mm -hmm. They became an independent after they won the election. He couldn't take a chance to run as an independent. Again, deceiving the people. If you want to build a bottom-up approach, show the people who you really are politically. Come out as an independent and run as an independent. Do not betray their trust. With all this bottom-up approach, where was the consultation before you broke ranks and became independent? Where was the consultation? Did you consult anyone? No. They got in a dark room by themselves and they made that dangerous and disturbing decision. These people are very distasteful and dishonest. But yeah. well, there seems to be a mixed reaction on the ground as of yesterday. Some people still complaining. Uh, one person, a contractor from Scarborough, said that complaint about the late payments are causing hardships uh, as far as getting money and workers getting paid on time. Now, all of this was something that was, was talked about on the campaign. Uh, Tobagonians building with Tobagonians in the interest of Tobagonians for of Tobago. Why still is there a bottleneck? Why still there's some bureaucratic process that is preventing Tobago from getting what is rightfully theirs? Fali is not a grassroots man. He's a high-minded man. Hence, you always operate high-mindedly. Remember, when the wanted to become independent, they jump out and they became independent. Remember, when he wanted to disrespect his political leader, he never consulted with me. He openly called the media and said he's going to disrespect me. This is a high-handed man we're dealing with, all right? When they were contractors over in Tobago and he should have been paying them, he went to the House of Assembly, called up their names, and disrespected them. He's a disrespected, disrespectful young man. And he's talking about bottom-up. If you're going to build bottom-up, you have to the lowest of low. You have to treat the lowest of low as the mightiest of might. Men, you have to treat people equally. You can't treat some one way and the next. Look at any of his pictures. When he's among people of a particular color, particular hair, he operates one way. He's always looking into the eyes of the prime minister, who's a PM candidate, and smiling with him as if he's in love, opening his mouth as if he's in awe. What type of foolishness is that? If you are for people, 
anything that is against Tobago, you will be against. You have all the people, and that's what it means from the, the bottom up. Nothing will miss you. That party has nowhere to go. I can tell you that. Are that you... party has nowhere to go at all. It uh -oh. is nothing but a candle in the wind. Now, now, some folks may say it's sour grapes and you have a political axe to grind, but let me ask you this. Uh, I mean, looking at what is taking place here, do you bear any of the responsibility when folks weigh in and say, listen, uh, Duke left that political register unmanned. He left it unmanned. He wasn't there to manage it. He placed it in the hands of political neophytes. And now not only is Duke paying the price, but the people of Tobago as well. What do you say about that? I do accept some responsibilities for putting Farley there. I should not have placed him there. However, you cannot encourage thrift by discouraging wealth. Abraham Lincoln said that. He also said you cannot strengthen the weak by weakening the strong. You want to start to build the people. And I felt that Farley was wise enough to take advice and to apply himself to learning and be built as a young, popular politician for the people, okay? But he never took advice. No sooner than he got inside there and he got blue light, coming from a poor background, he got blue lights, he's signing big checks, he got wild. Very, very wild. Very wild. And he's not listening to no one. Not the Baras James, Baras James complained. Hochai Chad complained, Diane Haddad complained, that is from the Chamber of Commerce. Everybody's complaining. He's not listening to anybody. He went on his own. He broke thick in his ears. That, to me, is the part that plays Tobago on destruction. Of himself, if he was pliable, if he was responsible, if he was a man who is amenable to good advice and good conversation, he would not have found himself in this position. Now he's running, looking for a home. He tried to form an independent party. Nobody's taking any commands from him. They're all independent. He's now trying to form an ex-party. And again, where is he going? Who did he consult on that? Why is he taking an election that was won by the PDP and placed it in the hands of a particular that has no bearing on the outcome of the election? That's fraud. One party can't win and another party governs. That is fraud. That is betrayal. And and, and what's next for Watson Duke? I mean, you, you talked about oh, the well, Port of well, Spain. Well, 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 Go well, ahead, well, tell well. us, please. I believe, thank you so much for watching that time, treasured question, what next for Watson Duke? I'll say this to you. When I attended St. Barnabas Angry School, Anglican School, which is now called Roxborough Anglican School in Tobago, I learned Little Nostra Rhyme. I'm not sure if you learn it at all. It says Little Bo Peep. You know the story? Of right? course, yes, yes. Little Bo Peep has a lot of sheep and don't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they will come home wagging their tails behind them. I will assure you, I know I've lost my sheep, sheep meaning the folly and the group I placed into power. But I will leave it alone. And they will come home wagging their tails behind them. I'm not going to fight with them. I will speak my truth. I will defend Tobago. I will defend the contractors. I will defend those low paid jobs and defend the marriage and the parish in Tobago fearlessly. However, my commitment at this time is to take the capital of Trinidad and Tobago. Tobago doesn't have its capital. The capital of Trinidad and Tobago is Port of Spain. And mm -hmm. that I'm set to do in the upcoming elections. Within the next eight months, it is booked. There will be a local government elections. And I will become the next mayor of Port of Spain. Once I am the mayor, I'll be used that position to leverage the change that was spoken up of on the platforms of the PDP in Tobago and a change that Trinidad is now demanding at the hands of the PNM. I will use it to be a voice and also some type of political muscle to push change in our country. And, and is, is it your belief that once you take the capital, you take the battle, you've won the war? That's right. Whoever takes the capital of any country 
would have taken the country by extension. Closing comments, go right ahead. I want to say to the people of Tobago and the people of Trinidad, now is not time to play political games with your life. Now it's time to put someone in a position who you can talk to, someone who respects your point of view and will fight to give you a better deal. Now is not time when your vote should be based on who you have been voting for all of your life and knowing fully well they have been betraying you. Now is time to vote for a fighter. Now is the time to vote for Watson Duke. Now is the time to vote for the PDP or we call them the PDP Spartans. I do thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Watson. You appreciate that.